Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Bill sent me a note about a story that happened over the weekend. Remember those Boeing 737 MAX planes? Two of them crashed. A judge has now ruled that the uh, crashes amounted to crimes and that the passengers' families are now deemed crime victims. And I'm not sure this is going to make much of a difference going forward. It's not like they're saying we should start prosecuting Boeing for crimes. But it is an interesting ruling because more often than not, we talk about plane crashes and plane crash accidents and plane accidents. And everyone always thinks that, oh, planes crash. That happens once in a while, plane crashes. So a federal judge has now ruled that relatives of people who died in the crashes are crime victims. And the only way you can be a victim of a crime is if, in fact, there is a crime that's been committed. So from the Associated Press, federal judge ruled on Friday that relatives of people killed in the crashes of two Boeing 737 MAX planes are crime victims under the definitions of federal law and should have been told about private negotiations over a settlement that spared Boeing from criminal prosecution. So here's the thing. Back up and look at a theoretical situation where someone is accused of a crime. Someone is accused of a crime. And the prosecutor is talking with the defendant or the defendant's counsel, and they're going to work out some kind of agreement to not prosecute the person. It's got a plea agreement. Many states and the feds have a requirement that if you're doing that, you must at least consult with the victims of that crime and at least let them know what you're doing. They have a right to know that. And so they're arguing here that when the feds and Boeing negotiated this matter, they should have included the families of the victims in those discussions. So they are crime victims under federal law and should have been told about the negotiations over a settlement that spared Boeing from criminal prosecution. The full impact of the ruling, however, is not clear. The judge said the next step is to decide what remedies the families should get for not being told of the talks with Boeing. So the planes crash, people on board die. The families of those victims say what's next. And next thing they know, they're being told, oh, by the way, Boeing will not be prosecuted. We worked out a deal with them. Huh? So the question is, if there is a rule that says you've got to notify the crime victim families, what happens when you don't? So some relatives are pushing to scrap the government's settlement with Boeing, and they've expressed anger that no one in the company has been held criminally responsible. Now, remember, this whole thing settled over a year ago. It was in January of 2021 that they reached the agreement, and it's just now coming out that, oh, by the way, they should have involved these other people. Boeing is based in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, They did not immediately respond to a request for comment, um, but they have agreed to pay $2.5 billion, including a $243 million fine as a result of those two crashes. The Justice Department agreed not to prosecute the company, and uh, one of the things that they were talking about was a conspiracy to defraud the government. That's according to the Associated Press. The Justice Department, in explaining why it didn't tell families about the negotiations, argued that the relatives were not crime victims. However, U.S. District Judge Reed O'Connor in Fort Worth, Texas, said the crashes were a foreseeable consequence of a conspiracy by Boeing making the relatives representatives of crime victims. In sum, but for Boeing's criminal conspiracy to defraud the FAA, 346 people would not have lost their lives in the crashes. So the judge is saying that there was a criminal conspiracy and it wound up with these people dying in these crashes. Now, a woman whose husband died in the second crash said Boeing is responsible for her husband's death. Families like mine are the true victims of Boeing's criminal misconduct and our views should have been considered before the government gave them a sweetheart deal, she said in a statement issued by a lawyer for the families. Now, I don't know about a sweetheart deal. Two and a half billion dollars are going to pay as a result of this, including a $243 million fine, but uh, I guess it, it, it could have been worse. The first MAX crashed in Indonesia 
in October of 2018, killing 189 people. And another crashed five months later in Ethiopia, killing 157. All MAX jets were then grounded worldwide for nearly two years. They were cleared to fly again after Boeing overhauled an automated flight control system that had activated erroneously in both crashes. So they say they've got that worked out, but I remember when that happened and the two of them uh, crashing like that so near in time to each other uh, was causing a lot of people to freak out, including over there at Boeing, as you can imagine. Now, when you talk about cases like this of corporations, uh, it's impossible for this discussion to not include Ford and its Pinto. And every time I mention the Ford Pinto, (laughs) I'll get people who jump in and start screaming and yelling, figuratively speaking, in the comment section. And so I'm making this very, very clear. I'm not going to say anything controversial about the Ford Pinto. I am going to make statements that are factually 100% correct. And Ford at one point in time made a car called a Pinto. And there were allegations that it was unsafe and had an unnecessarily high risk of fire during certain types of collisions. That was the allegation. Whether that allegation is true or not is not what I'm getting at here. There simply was the allegation. Okay, so the allegation is Ford Pintos might have a higher incidence of certain types of fires and certain types of collisions. Okay, that's the allegation. During that time frame, there was a case out of Indiana, where someone died as the result of being in an accident in which a Ford Pinto was a participant. Again, everything I've said right now is factually correct. You can go look it all up. People right now are scrutinizing every word and going through it slow motion to see if I've made a mistake so far, and I have not. There was a fatality accident involving one in Indiana. As a result of that, authorities in Indiana actually went to a grand jury and a grand jury indicted Ford Motor Company for reckless homicide. They had a trial and the jury returned a not guilty verdict. So what I just told you is absolutely true, but it's one of the examples that people often talk about is they say, you know, corporations never get held accountable for what they do uh, other than fines and so on. And fines are just money, you know, and if, if you or I did something where someone died, you know, we go to jail. Corporation does it. They cut a check and they keep, they keep, you know, doing their business. And so I'm not saying that the people in the Pinto case should have been convicted. I'm simply pointing out that it does happen. But it happens so rarely that a corporation is ever put on trial for a crime. And then the question is, if the corporation gets found guilty, can you lock people up? Can you lock up members of the board or the people who made the decisions? And and that's always the question because I'm not aware of any modern cases where that has happened. And so getting back to the Boeing 737 MAX, uh, the question is, if Boeing, if Boeing was involved in a criminal conspiracy that resulted in people's deaths, uh, the question is, what else could they do besides fine the heck out of them and make them pay a ton of money? Uh, and theoretically, you could put somebody on trial. You could put the corporation on trial. But then is, is you know, what's the result there? Does, does somebody actually go to jail or do they just get find again. So that's the big question. And that's one of the problems that many people have when we talk about this stuff is that big corporations tend to do things and get away with it that you or I could never do. And, you know, that's, that's the joke. If I, you know, if I steal a couple bucks from you, I can go to jail. Big company steals thousands from you and says, hey, it's profit. (laughs) So it's a crazy situation. But the interesting thing here is that the federal judge has ruled that the families of the victims are actually family members related to crime victims, which means that it's not the crash that was the crime, but it's what led to the crash was a crime. Therefore, the Boeing 737 MAX situation is deemed a criminal situation. Now, will that change anything? Probably not. But I can imagine some possibilities, you know, like for insurance purposes, 
where it might make a difference if you died as a result of a quote-unquote accident versus dying as a result of a criminal act. That might make a difference. And there could be other situations. But the primary thing just simply here is that the feds now look bad because they worked out a negotiation and a deal without consulting the victim's families. And these are crime victims. So we don't know if that means you got to go back and undo the deal and then redo it but inform these people. Or if it's just going to be kind of like, well, you know, we screwed up. Sorry. Because unfortunately, there are things in the law where the law says you must do this, you must do that. But if there's no remedy that says, oh, by the way, if you fail to do this, this will happen to you. And I'm not sure whether the rules that say you must inform the victim's families uh, about this, if there's a remedy if they fail to do that. So we'll find that out somewhere down the road. But it's an interesting story. It broke on Friday over the weekend. So Boeing crashes, passengers' families deemed crime victims by a federal judge. Bill said it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Edit your life frequently and ruthlessly. It's your masterpiece after all.